Hello, hello, hello there! This is not what we were normally expecting. The new video is about to drop and it's a whopper. I definitely recommend you check it out. However, in the meantime, we have had an announcement just go out of nowhere. Caught me completely by surprise. So, I want to take a second, I want to look into this and see what exactly Wizard is up to. Let's see what we got. So, holy crap, it is the 13th of October. I gotta think about one movie for Halloween. Anywho! Standard. No changes, huh? Huh. I mean, that's fair. That is fair and reasonable. The one thing about Oron's Epiphany, and I, I don't think Zika's Chariot should ever be banned. I mean, yeah, it's good, but is it phenomenal? Is it format warping? No, it's just a good card that can be dealt with. It's a creature. You save your arguments for someone else. Oron's Epiphany, however, I'll tell you what, I'll get my thoughts in a second. All right, so we've been carefully monitoring the standard metagame since the format rotation and release of Innistrad Midnight Hunt as Innistrad Midnight Hit Standard, blah, 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 blah. We've been aware of some players' concerns about the impact of certain individual cards on metagame diversity, such as Epiphany and Zeke's Chariot. After reviewing the arena metagame data and recent online events, including the World Championship, and in consideration, excuse me, in considering the upcoming release of Innistrad Crimson Vile, we decided not to make any changes at this time. I agree. I agree in the fullest. I mean, Zeke's Chariot covered it. But Auron's Epiphany, yes, it's annoying. Yes, it can snowball. And you guys aren't going to like this. But ha as, someone, as someone who's been playing since 1994, I know what Broken is. I know what Bannable is. And neither of those cards are that. They are annoying. They are extremely annoying. Auron's Epiphany is, has the ability to snowball out of control. And there's the argument out there like, Hey, Tix extra turn spells oh oh they're so unfair and trust me i have had my fair share of salt at this as well you know i have definitely gone yeah i read epiphany he's got another one get mad iteration but it doesn't matter you're talking about either a six mana card a seven mana card or an eight slash nine mana combo all of which can be disrupted you could argue you could say well excuse me excuse me gm uh but yeah, it's in the Exile Zone. We can't actually affect it with Discard. Fabulous. Play Counter Spells. Ooh, we don't want to play blue. I don't blame you for playing blue. You know what you should do? Uh, I don't want to say the words. Play green. Play aggro. I won't say green. Play aggro. Kill your opponent before they get to that point. And if you say something like, well, <laughs> how can I kill my opponent when the rest of their deck is removal? Play Control. They go Galvatic Iteration. You're like, okay. Orange Epiphany. Copied. You go, all right, Galvatic Iteration. Oh, uh, saw it coming. What? <laughs> Test of Talents, Counterspell. I mean, there's a million things you can do. What's that card? Oh, man, there was a card back when... Oh, what is it? There was a card back when um, Cascade was first introduced that is popping into my head. It's like two blue and a red. Counter up to two target spells. Let's see you know what i'm talking about aha double negative that's the easiest answer in the world of course it is double negative that's what you need to do you need to stop your opponent there's a million cards in this format and i know you can feel powerless in certain situations i have been there too and it is frustrating but you know what i've also seen i've also seen those same control players sitting there with their epiphanies and uh you know uh exile their or clogging up their hand and they didn't draw their perfect ability to. It just goes with the territory, man. You win some, you lose some. You don't ban it out of fear. My opinion, anyways. Feel free to just, you know, of the one to three people who are going to see and actually watch or actually listen to what I have to say, feel free to leave a comment and let me know how full of it I am. But I mean, you can't compare something like All Rounds Epiphany or <laughs> Zeke. Ezekiel Sher is laughable. That should never be banned. That's a well-balanced card you can talk about ren and seven you can talk about interactions but that's still interactions or combo otherwise it's a four four for four there you go does it spread the power out yes does it grow incrementally yes but that's it that's it it's a card that can snowball with enough time if you give your opponent time you're probably going to lose to pretty much anything that's the key takeaway from these two cards if you give your opponent time or you don't have an answer, they will win the game. Just like if they give you time and they don't have the answer, you will win the game. It's easy to throw those arguments away. I've seen things that have been banned worthy. I've seen things get rightfully banned. I have played in formats 
that were just garbage. Just absolute garbage. This does not surprise me. It should surprise absolutely no one out there. Moving on to historic. Historic? Ooh. Oh, oh no more Tybalt's twattery. Yes. I'll breathe it in. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, 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 what do you mean? You said that you said that if you could interact with things, they weren't scary. So, the thing about Tybalt's trickery. Very, very, very annoying card, but very red in flavor. They could have fixed it by just saying counter target spell and opponent controls. Because things like Chaos Warp and all these effects that red have where it's like, get rid of this, however, have something random. That is a very in flavor for red, and I stand by Tybalt's Trickery with those little words and opponent controls would have been perfect. It would have been the jank it was meant to be. However... As fun as it is seeing people whiff on Tybalt's Trickery with a zero mana artifact. Throws of Chaos exists for some reason. Some some reason, Throws of Chaos exists. Throws of Chaos, Tybalt's Trickery, that is a consistent, repeatable combo. And now they can do a turn three thanks to Mystic's Mastery. You literally go turn three. I mean, actually, I just, uh, one of the, the video I'm getting ready to release from earlier, which is a baller, this deck, I was crushing with this deck. Anyways, the only loss was to Tybalt's Twattery. Why? Because they went turn two, duh, make a treasure. Turn three, Throws of Chaos. And it, even had I survived that Throws of Chaos, let's say they just whipped, it has retrace. You get to do it over and over, so you have two options. Either we get rid of Throws of Chaos, or we get rid of Tybalt's Twattery. Throws of Chaos, I have no idea why it's even in this format. I don't know what it even does. Is it just a value card? Sure, it's a value card. Keep it as a value card. Tybalt's Twattery has no purpose. None. I like the card, but as long as Throws of Chaos is in the format, this cannot be. So what do you go after? Hmm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I am so happy they're going after Tybalt's Twattery. Bear with me. Disregarding everything I just said. Dude, that's at least, I think I only have three. I better go craft one more. That's four free freaking wild cards, people. Wild cards are where it's at. Give me those rare wild cards all day. So get Twattery out of here. That card has no business being in the format now that Throws of Chaos is here. If you want to keep the deck alive, ban Throws of Chaos. Because that has no purpose here. But come on. Come on. Come on. Uncommon wild cards are rare. I'll take the rare and I will be happy about it. Moving on. Memory Lapse is suspended in Historic. <sighs> That one, I'm actually mm, a bit... I don't agree with that one, actually. Let's go see. Is there... Let's go look at their logic first. Let's skim. Okay, so... I'm not even going to bother with Tybalt's Trickery. We already went over that crap. Okay. Uh, memory Lapse emerged as a nearly must-include in high-performing blue deck, so it was most played not lane. Blah, 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 What we do believe that... While we do believe that removing Memory Lapse from the format is likely to create further improvements in format diversity, we also believe the case is less clear than Tybalt's Twattery. As such, and in order to increase format diversity, Memory Lapse is suspended. I don't know if I like that. That's like... I mean... Memory Lapse is annoying, really annoying, but that's all it is. You could argue it's a time walk. Anything can be a time walk. Any counter spell can be a time walk. Memory Lapse is definitely annoying, but I don't think it was ever banned worthy. It's just annoying. It's just an annoying card that people complain about. Ooh, memory Lapse, I don't want to be you. It's like, that card's been around forever. That card was from like Homelands or something. Yeah, I think I remember either Homelands or Ice Age. It's an old one. It's been around long, it's been around as long as I have, and it's never been one of those cards where people are like, oh my god, we just gotta ban it. Did they say ban it? Suspended. I don't think they should ban that. At all. I mean, you think about it, it's annoying. It's a time walk in some cases, but it's just annoying. Sometimes it just doesn't do anything. It's rare, but it has happened. It's it's in my opinion. It's one of the most efficient counter spells because like re well not i like it a little better than remand even though remand does draw you a card remand's really good too but as far as memory lapse goes this just it's just it's annoying it shouldn't be removed just because oh you're playing blue well you gotta play it 
man, I just had a, a, a Grixis, um, what was it, Grixis Lurus uh, uh, Delver, Grixis Delver list built that I was looking forward to playing, and now I can't play Memory Lapse, and I know, I know, Whoa, you can't play your card, but that card is, it's all about tempo, and if you're going to play aggro control, you got to have some form of tempo, and there's nothing like Memory Lapse. The thing is, Memory Lapse... Memory left is fair in that it doesn't counter it, it just delays it. No, not like the Future Sight card. I mean, it literally puts it off. Is it annoying? Of course. I don't think it's suspension or ban worthy, though. It's just one of those cards you have to keep in mind. And in a format like Historic, where the power level is where it's at, I mean, what's more annoying? Oh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I was going to say, what's more annoying? Having your spell censored or having your spell... Uh, Memory lapse, but you know, obviously memory lapse is more annoying because you got to draw it next turn, you lose the ability to the top of your library. So I can understand where people are coming from, but in my opinion, having seen what qualifies as bannable power level wise, I do not agree with memory lapse. I just think that's the result. Now, see, I was going to say that's the result of people complaining too much, but wizards should never be making decisions based on what the people say. People get angry about everything. Look it up. They're calling to ban Zika's Chariot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not a 4-4 four, four for 4 that gets bigger. Ooh. Jeez. Gotta wonder how we ever lived with cards like... I don't know. Man, I can think of a million cards better than a Zika's Chariot. It is good. I'm not gonna say it's not good. And in this current standard, it's really good. But do you see it anywhere else? No. Why don't you see it anywhere else? Because it's literally only good in this little bubble. And this little bubble is about to either pop or dramatically change when the next set is released. That's standard in a nutshell. I know it's annoying to play against, but who cares? It either does nothing, or it's just another creature or threat to be dealt with. Yeah, it is. Memory Lapse definitely should not be. Should not have been touched. It's very in line with the power level of the format. I mean, we've got... We've got... Dang near all, almost said it. <laughs> Dang near all of modern and pioneer in this format. Like a lot of the tiers of that have snuck in. Do I think memory lapse should be, would be banned from those formats? Of course not. It's just annoying. That's just annoying. I'm not even going to go into that thing further. My opinion, I don't agree with the memory lapse. Oh, brainstorm is banned. Four more wild cards. I got nothing to say about that. Brainstorm is garbage. That should never have been introduced. It just. I mean, it does suck. It means I can't play um, my Locust God Indomitable Creativity deck ever again because you can't really play that deck without Brainstorm. Hey, get out of here. So, yeah, I'm glad. Oh, sweet. So, that means you know, seven, possibly eight wild cards. Love it. All right. Five digital-only cards are being rebalanced. Davriel's Withering and Davriel's Soulbroker's third ability now only affect creature and opponent controls. Faceless Agent is now a 2-2? Sarkon, Wanderer, Ship's second ability is now plus. Wait, what? Subversive Accolade now costs one black from two black and is a two three. Uh, two, two, seven. Wait, they made their cards. Okay, so rebalancing the Davriel cards makes sense. That's been something people have been calling for forever, which again really sucks because when does this take effect? Oh no! I was going to play. I had a, a Vesper Lark deck built for tomorrow. I better record that video tonight. Anyways, takes effect tomorrow. There. Why are they beefing up their own cards? I gotta see this. Let's take a look. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Yeah, don't care. We already covered all that. Brainstorm should just stay gone. That card's way too powerful for this format. In addition to these bands, we update the text digitally. Cards will remain accurate to their new function. Functional rebalancing is a significant change in how we're managing balance for our formats, and it merits a bit of explanation on what it does and doesn't mean. Going forward, we'll be managing formats on NTG Arena in two different ways. Print formats, like standard, will continue to work exactly like they do in Tabletop Magic. For live formats, like historic, we are adding live balancing alongside banning and suspension as a tool to address problems and make improvements to the format. We're very aware that there are many Magic Arena players who want the game to be on an authentic representation of Tabletop Magic, and our print formats will remain exactly that. Here, a card will always work the same, uh, the same way that the printed version of the card does, and balance will be maintained the same way it traditionally has been, through banning cards when they prove to be problematic. In addition to being authentic, blah, 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 blah. Can we, can we see here? Okay. Digital games often make use of a wide array of balancing tours, tools, like live rebalancing, and for good reason. The increased play rates and data collection possible in digital games tends to magnify the impact of power imbalances. 
which makes it invaluable to have more tools to restore balance. Currently, we are restricting these changes to digital-only cards, where there will be no conflict between a digital and printed version of a card. I'd like to explain beyond this, for example, by rebalancing previously balanced cards, blah, blah, blah. Multiple clarity and communication problems we will need to solve before we can consider these types of change or those types of changes. This is something we plan to work on in the coming months, and since it bears repeating, would only affect digital formats. Okay, since these digital only cards, I'm looking at the how will rebalance cards work. Yeah, the text and stats on these cards will change to match their new values exactly as they were pinned in the Oracle update. Okay, okay. Okay, all right, okay, I, okay. When they put it like that, that is a good point. I mean, granted, we've had a struggle with, the first thing I think off the top of my head is Time Bolt. You know, you used to be able to not have the Time Bolt will tie a key combo. It used to be Time Bolt was like, oh my God. It was ridiculous. It was like zero mana, skip your next turn, put a time counter on this, remove any number of time counters, take an extra, okay, so skip your next turn, put a time counter on this to untap it. Tap, remove any number of time counters to take an additional turn after this. There must be at least one time counter for this to happen. It was something like that, like when they Oracle texted it to make it uh, uh, work without that. Then they just said, you know what, Oracle text is dumb. Play the cards as printed. And now we're getting back into Oracle updates, but these are live action Oracle updates. I guess when you put it like that, it does make a bit more sense. I don't like the idea that they're, I mean, the Dabriel cards make sense, but the Acolyte and the Sarkon, it's like, oh, we thought these cards would be better. Uh, we better power them up to make them better. That's not Oracle change. That's just, ooh, we want our cards to be better. Why isn't anyone playing them? All right, let's see. So yeah, target creature perpetually, target creature and opponent controls. That's easy, but why? Okay, Faceless Agent is an important card for tribal decks that don't currently have the density of cards legal and historic to fill out their curves. This is a simple buff to improve the experience of players. Yeah, that's, why are they buffing something like Faceless Agent? Are you going to buff um, Silver Girl Adept while you're at it? It's not fair that he only has one toughness. Oh, boy. This is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two that, or excuse me, it was a 3-mana 2-1 that drew a card from your tribal deck. It was random, but who cares? It guaranteed a threat was put in your hand. Not a random card, a threat. And now they want to make him a little bit stronger because he's just a little 2-1. That's garbage. This, understandable. This, do not agree with. They, wanna, they wanted us to play with their pet cards. We didn't, and now they're like, well, what if we make them better? Why? It was fine on its own. I mean, it's a common. Why are you changing the power level of a common? I get it. Yeah, we'd rather have a 2-2 than a 2-1, but it's a 2-1 that counts as your creature type and replaces itself, not with a random card, but with a threat in your tribal deck. That's ridiculous. And this one, too. Okay. Sarkon's second ability is weaker than the other two, especially considering the tension between choosing to conjure Shiver Dragons versus the first ability to fuel minus two abilities. We are aiming to better balance and reduce the tension between the abilities. Let's return. Let's, okay, this. Do they not test? Of course they don't test. We know they don't test. That's all this comes down to. Ugh, we saw people who were doing all this and they were complaining that they got this Sarkon. Well, no, you, I guess you don't get it in a pack because you have to play the event and get it there. Then you can choose a different pack. So. The only way people would be complaining about this card is if they either got it, like they chose it, or it was given as like a free reward. Then why are you complaining about a free mythic? I don't care how bad it is. It's a free mythic. Mythic. It's a free mythic. Don't complain. And now they're like, well, well, why not do a minus one on that last part? I don't want to have a conflict there. I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's just, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Like those two cards make no sense. We wanted you guys to play our pet cards, but... They're kind of garbage. So we're going to try to make them a little less garbage so that maybe you guys will play them. What are you going to do? Keep powering these up until somebody plays them? That's ridiculous. All right, let's look at Subversive Acolyte. Okay, so it was a 2-2 two, two for 2, Efficient Grizzly Bear. Pay 2. He either turns into a, what was that, 3-5 Lifelink or a <laughs> Fire Exceed Negator, which I do love. And now he's a 2-3 two, for 2 with that ability. Let's see what they say. 
Subversive Acolyte compares, er, competes too directly with Gifted Aetherborn for, e for black decks looking for defensive options, and changing its mana cost as a defensive option for black decks without needing to commit heavily into black to play Gifted. They want to make it more splashable and make it more powerful? Why? They know creatures, multiple creatures of different costs and ability can exist, right? Yeah, it's a 2-2. Two, two, it's, a, it's a grizzly bear. It's a grizzly bear with pretty sweet ability one way or the other. If you're playing against a control deck, hopefully not one that's uh, red-based, <laughs> you turn them into a fire extend negator. Those of us who played back in Urza's Destiny or... Yeah, Urza's Destiny. God, has it been that long? It has been that long. Those that those of us that played back in... Um, Urza's Destiny, or in my case, in Vintage, saw Swamp, Dark Ritual, Fire City Negator go. I remember my first big tournament was at a local card shop. I was playing, um, I was playing Red Green Beats. So for those who don't know, it's basically a red green aggro list of old. I mean, this is we're talking really old. It had like Curd Ape. God, I can't remember. If it wasn't Sky Shred Elite. What else do I have? All I can remember are my Curd Apes because I had a Curd Ape collection. What else was in that deck? God, I played that all over. Lightning Bolt, I remember that because my top eight opponent, I remember this distinctly, he was playing Mono Black uh, Suicide, Suicide Black, and he goes, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Fire Extinct Negator, go. And I went, oh boy. Taiga, Lightning Bolt. Boom. There goes his land, there goes his threat. That's the game you play. If they got a Lightning Bolt, you're screwed. If they don't, you got a 5-5 Trampler that they got to deal with. <laughs> That's back on topic. This was fine. Was it great? No. Was it acceptable? Yeah, absolutely. It was a fair power level for a grizzly bear, but they just couldn't have it. They had to make it bigger. Oh man, gifted etherboard's out there, guys. If ours isn't a 2-3 for 2, then it's not as good. Alright. I'm ranting. Holy crap, it's been like 20 minutes of this rant. I will say this. 90% of this I agree with. Epiphany, Chariot, no reason to get rid of them. They're fine. You'll be fine. I'll be fine. The salt will flow, and we'll all move on with the next set. And at that point, if for some reason they're, like, dominating everywhere, we'll address it then. The historic changes, the bans and suspensions, 50-50. Well, I guess it'd be, what, 33-67. I agree with everything but the memory lapse. Brainstorm should never have been introduced into Vault's twattery. It should... <laughs> I'm happy that crap's gone. And then we have... Memory Labs, which of course, I, as I said, I do not agree with, but I understand. At least they're trying to keep an eye on things and keep an eye on the format, and yada, yada, yada. But the rebalancing things? Okay, sorry. 50%. These two? Absolutely. That ability should never have gotten, should never have been its thing. Those? I got nothing to say about that. That's literally just, why aren't you guys playing our pet cards? Let's make them better, guys. No! We're not playing them because they're crap. They fit in no archetype. No one's going to play Sarkon Dragons. Have you ever seen anyone play Sarkon Dragons and win? Uh. Subversive Acolyte? Who cares? Okay. You know what? Take from this what you will. I agree with most of it. Good job, Wizards, with most of this. That second part just seems, like, desperate. Like, there was someone on their development team who was like, But guys, I made Sarkon. Why won't anyone play with him? Can you make him better? No. The card is printed. You should have tested with it earlier to make it better. Eh, whatever. It's nothing worth getting worked up about. That's just that just seems very, very silly to me. Very, very silly. But it is a digital format. Guess I'll just have to accept that a card I play today will may not necessarily be the same card I play tomorrow. Suppose at the end of the day that's life. Wizards will do what they will do. <laughs> And we will eat it. All right. That is all for me. I will see everybody later.